Well, there we go, five on the dot. Five million, that is. Well, how's everybody enjoying the air conditioning? I'm enjoying it. I know not everybody is, but I'm, I'm, I, I guess the majority is. And, um, it's the old thing with it. If you're feeling a bit cool, there's always such a thing as a jacket so, or coat. So. But um, I think uh, come February, March next year, we're going to be praising all of that um, if it does feel a bit cool. And uh, yeah, this, uh, this building compared to the, the other one we were in, uh, still a little teething problems, but um, Lord willing we'll get there. And just like to uh, thank everybody for coming out tonight on this um, Father's Day. Uh, and that uh, we just have a uh, pleasant time this evening and um, I believe there's another um, update as well. No, that's Wednesday night, is it? All right. Yeah, there was an update on one of our uh, missionaries uh, that we had this morning. I'm not sure if they be replaying that uh, past or not. Right. If you would be available individually but to uh, anyone anyway, they would have to do is just um, ask pastor and quite sure it'd be fine away passing it on. Okay, let's just open with a word of prayer this morning and back this evening. And um, we'll pass over to uh, Sai for the song leader. Lord Heavenly Father, just uh, thank you for this day, thank you for the uh, opportunity to meet here in this um, new building that's um, only um, been used really for um, assembly uh, with the school and then uh, now us as a, as a church and um, we do thank you for your many fold blessings. We'll just ask Father that um, as we uh, sing praises tonight and then as uh, Pastor opens the word that it would um, reach our hearts and that um, we'd go a little bit closer to you. We just ask all these things in your son's precious name. Mm -hmm.
Good evening, everybody. It's uh, time for the memory verse again, and we're doing an extra verse because it's the first Sunday of the month. So we'll be including verse 18. So we'll be going from Philippians 3, verse 7 to verse 18, and we'll be going through all those verses once. And um, just a reminder if you want to give offerings or things to the missionaries, the boxes are on the table there if you want to make use of that and um, yeah so that's there for your use so let's go through the verses then. so if you have your bibles here you can open them up or you can follow on the screen so i'll say the reference you say the reference and then we go through it together so philippians chapter 3 verse 7 to 18 all things were gained to me, those are counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless in my count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the Lord, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings, being made conformable unto His death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, which we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. He follow us together with me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even me, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to that. Maybe seated. 
have your Bibles, take them to Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. And while you turn there, a few things. If you're here this evening, happy Father's Day if that applies to you. And we're glad you're with us. If you did not get a Father's Day present um, this morning, uh, you're welcome to get one this evening. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there once that's done. Uh, generally during the service, once we get started and things like that, just remember, uh, we will try to keep those doors closed. Uh, so that way, not to try to keep people out or anything, but as you keep the doors closed, it helps the, the system regulate itself. And um, I'm going to be asking, there is a way that you can turn everything on in here without turning the air conditioning on and be able to open the louvers and turn the fans on. And uh, so what I may, be, I may do is I ask how we can do that. So then that way maybe on a Sunday night service on a cooler night, um, we can do that and have the, them open and the, and the air going and the fan going and all that. Uh, but I'm just glad that hopefully, uh, we, I was told by the school, we'll all learn together how well the air conditioning works. Um, and let's just pray that it works well. Come a couple months when you know it gets into Christmas time, uh, it'll be nice. And so let's be seeing how that goes. And uh, several other announcements and things to keep in mind. Um, this is, if you want to give to the offering for the Paneros, uh, this is the last night to do it. Uh, the clay bowl is still on the table, and so if you want to give that way, you can. If you want to transfer, uh, you can. Uh, last Sunday, we voted, and as a church, we're giving uh, the Paneros a $3,000 offering to assist, and then we opened up the opportunity for folks to be able to give to add to that. And uh, right now, we are just under another $2,600 has come in to add to the $3,000 to give to the Paneros. And uh, so this has become, I think, the largest single love offering we've given to a missionary family. Um, and, you know, we'll, we just want to be a blessing and help. And if you still want to be a part of that, you're welcome to. Uh, no obligation, but you are welcome to. And then also, hopefully you've been praying. Just seeking the Lord and coming to a, a conclusion on what step of faith that you're going to take in your missions giving. And if you have one of these, um, or if you don't have one of these on the welcome table, there's a pile of them. And we're just going to ask between you know today and next Sunday, um, if you could fill those out, put the amount in, circle weekly, fortnightly, or monthly, and then circle child, teen, or adult, whichever applies to you. Uh, fold that up and slide that in the missions offering box and when the offering is counted those will be added out and we'll be able to see what our uh, faith promise missions commitment is last year our faith promise missions giving commitment was uh, just around one thousand three hundred and ninety two dollars and like fifty cents a month um, was our commitment and uh, so far uh, we've given about $1,500 a month to missions. So as a church, we've outgiven the commitment we made last year. And uh, that's enabled us to be able to take on a new missionary and increase some support and uh, do some special things for our missionaries. And so keep uh, that in mind. And then today, as we're looking at uh, God's provision and victory and new beginnings and all those types of things, we're looking at the book of Joshua tonight. Uh, and starting probably... Uh, Maybe not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that, uh, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled studies. You know, we'll get back to the, to the book of John, and we'll get back to the book of Isaiah on Sunday nights. Uh, but we'll do these now. And do keep in mind, I did forget to remember to make this announcement this morning, uh, but I'll send a message out to everyone in the church. Remember, next Sunday night is our international dinner. Uh, next Sunday night, 5 o'clock, uh, we're going to start out, rather than with a service, we're going to start out with a meal together. And so if you'd like to bring uh, a main uh, to share, um, I can look around. If you don't know what to bring, um, you know, I can put some requests in if you want me to. And uh, we, we can do that. And 
next Sunday night, um, my wife was telling me some, I think her and Vera were talking about it, and uh, we're not going to be eating in here, we're going to be eating, you've seen the hallways, uh, the hallways are huge, um, and, and they have suggested, and I, I believe they are correct, those hallways will be far easier to clean things from than this floor. And uh, so we'll eat out there, and then we'll all come back in here, and we'll have a service, we'll observe the Lord's uh, Supper uh, together, uh, sing some songs, and have an abbreviated service after the meal. And that'll conclude our missions emphasis time. Um, as a church, that doesn't conclude our responsibility to reach out to our community and, and with our missionaries, um, but that, will, that emphasis time will end with that. And then we'll go back to our regular um, series we've been looking at. And I want and two, uh, thank you for being understanding and flexible and all those things. Because uh, being in a new building, there's new things to get used to. Um, there's some issues to work through with the sound. And if you're in the orchestra, uh, we're doing our best to try to figure out a way so that way uh, you guys can hear the song leader better. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll work through that and find a way. And. Um, That'll be good. And uh, if you could also do something as a church, help us, uh, help the song leader and help those that are playing instruments. Um, the same amount of people are in here, but because we're not this way in the other hall, we were all kind of compressed and we were back. And so when you sang the volume coming forward, you sounded like you sang, sang louder in that hall than you do in this hall. Is that a fair statement, Brother Jim? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you, when you're up here leading the singing, you don't realize, you know, when you're there, you don't realize, but up here you do. Uh, it does. But because the seats are spread out a little bit, um, just sing out, you know. Just, just sing out. You know? Enjoy yourself and worship God. You'll help the song leader um, if you do do that. And then, Lord willing, in time, we'll fill out that way like we did the other building, right? And now we'll just keep on. But if you could help us with those things, that would be uh, wonderful. I'm sure the song leader would greatly appreciate that. Um, but John chapter 3. John chapter 3, we'll be looking at the first nine verses. And I'd like to just bring a message to you this evening. Really, it's about three simple steps for victory. For living a victorious Christian life and for... Uh, for seeing God do uh, great things. In John chapter 3 it says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. It came to pass, after three days, that the officers went through the hosts, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. Now as you say the book of Joshua, obviously we know it's the sixth book of the Old Testament. It, it starts the books of history. And there's five books of poetry, twelve books of history. Five, I mean, five books of the law, 12 books of history, five books of poetry, five major prophets, 12 minor prophets, right? Remember when we did the, the survey of the Old Testament? And uh, as we, we see now, they're, they're presently struggling is entirely different from Egypt into this wilderness experience. 
Now they need strength to fight an enemy they're about to meet. And, uh, and, and God says clearly to Joshua, and Joshua clearly, um, God says to Joshua, yet uh, he says to them, that in verse 4, there's a space between you and it, it's about 2,000 cubits, by measure not near, um, come not near unto it, that ye may know that the way which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. God was going to do something amongst them and lead them in a way they had never gone before. They had never walked this path before. Uh, they had never entered this land before. Uh, they had never been on this part of the journey of their life before. And you know what? Um, as, as we've lived these last few years, we have not been this way here before, have we? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an unusual time. And so I think a lot of times we're in the exact same place where, where these folks were. And as we move into to a new building, as we start a new year of, of giving to missions, as we uh, seek to see and maybe increase and do more this year uh, than we've ever done before in the area of missions, and uh, there's some exciting things that could be in store in the near future. We've not walked that way before. We've not done these things before as a church. We've, we've not been able to have that privilege yet. And if we're going to do that, there are some things that we need to do that they did in this passage of Scripture that God told them to do that will help them have victory as they walk in a way and follow God in a way that they have not been able to do before. very first thing in the first four verses uh, they were told to do was to follow. Joshua said, hey, when the Ark of the Covenant in the morning comes, and when it comes by you, you better follow it. You better not get too close to it, but you better stay close enough that you can see it, you can watch it, and you can get direction from it, and you know and that ark will go, and where it goes, you'll know how to go because you haven't gone this way before. That ark of the covenant, is, as we know, was a representation of the very presence of God. When, when they stopped moving, and that was in the tabernacle, that's where God dwelt amongst them. That's where God communicated with them. That's where that offering was put onto the mercy seat once a year on the Day of Atonement to be able to pay for their sins. And, and all that was represented in the Ark of the Covenant. They were told that they had to get up early. They had to see the Ark and they had to follow it. Why do you need to follow that? Well, it was very easy. They hadn't crossed that way before. They were about to do some things they'd never done before. Do you know what? Today, tomorrow, next month, next year, we will walk through things we've never done before. That's true of any day, of any year, of any month. And none of our scientific knowledge, none of our earned degrees, none of our hard-earned riches, none of our uh, close friendships or, or our relatives or, or our authorities can help us with the different life struggles completely. Nothing in this world, no knowledge we have, can help us to be able to get through what we, we go through each and every day and what lies in the future. What lies in the future? I don't know what lies in the future. I'm sure there's a lot of families in our church that the last couple of years, if they knew it was in the future, they, if they could have, they would have picked something different, correct? But yet, God says, you know what? You need to follow the ark. No one in the children of Israel had crossed that way. Can I tell you something? Your struggles, your problems, your expectations are entirely different than the person sitting right next to you. They're different than, than the family sitting behind you or in front of you. Even for a man who is 100 years old, for him, uh, the, the world and his daily events are still new. Nothing is predictable. And you can't stop it even if you wanted to. Because none of us 
have done this before. Only God knows the way and the end result of your life and my life. That's it. Only God knows. Hey, do you know what? God already knew what was going to happen in the book of Joshua before they lived it. And you and I look at the book of Joshua and we go, man, it's, it's okay. God takes care of you. We know it. But you, weren't, you wouldn't say the same thing if you were living Joshua chapter 3, would you? We, we know what's going to happen. The Jordan River is going to part. They're going to walk across the dry ground. No big deal. You know that, right? You know when they get to Jericho and they're going to march around the city one time a day. And then on the seventh day, they're going to do it seven times. And then they're going to shout, we know the walls are going to come down. And they're going to go in and completely wipe out the city, save uh, Rahab and her family. We know that, right? So nothing to worry about. We know all the victories they're going to have. But you were in Joshua chapter 3 before it ever happened. They had no idea. They just knew, hey, God said, follow me. Stay, stay close. I'll guide you. I'll direct you. I'll lead you. Get up early in the morning, and when you see that ark go by, you follow it, and wherever it goes, you go, and I will lead you exactly where you need to be. Can I tell you something? The instructions for the Christian life are exactly the same. Oh, it may not be the ark of the covenant that you follow, but you get up early in the morning. You meet with God. You follow the instructions. You say, why? Because some of us are in our Joshua 3 moments. We don't know what's next. And although we may look at the Bible and say, well, you know what? It should have been easier for Joshua to have faith in God. But what about you and you, whatever you're going through? What about you know, the next time you go to the doctors and there's, there's a diagnosis or the next time something happens? And, and you know, what, what happens then? You're there where Joshua's and the children of Israel are, having never gone this way heretofore. The very first thing you must remember when you get into something like that is simple. Follow God. Don't quit. Stay close. Don't get yourself too far separated from God. Because God's the only one who knows what every step holds. God's the only one who is the strength for each and every day, no matter what it is you're going to go through. God is the only one who can, can say, you know what? This may look like a flooded river, but I can make it dry ground for you if you follow me. So we need to remember the very first thing is we need to follow God. The ways of the man always look good. But the end of our ways is death, is it not? God's ways are always better and always lead to life. He led the people of Israel like a shepherd. No direction, no path, no nothing is ever hidden from God. God knows the ways, and He knows the struggles, and He knows the temptations that you'll face. And I can tell you this. He will never lead you into temptation. He will always lead you in the path to follow Him. To be victorious. It's when, we, it's when we distance ourselves too far from Him that we can get lost in the way. Have you ever... Uh, years ago, we were, we were in the States and um, we were at an amusement park and, and my, my, one of my daughters tells a story that traumatized her greatly. And uh, there were three adults, and there were three children. It was myself, my wife, and my mom. And then there were three kids. There was Brianna, there was Josiah, and there was Caitlin. And this was probably, oh, seven years ago or so, seven, six, seven years ago. We are at an amusement park, and we said, okay, each adult get a child. Well, I had Josiah. My wife had Brianna. So the assumption was made. Mom had Katie. Fair assumption. That's what we said. Everyone got married. And all of a sudden, we turn around, and I think my wife says to my mom, where's Katie? Well, I don't know. I thought you had her. And guess what? She got separated. 
she was still back at a ride, you know, wanting to go on the ride or something like that. And, and uh, we all got separated. We were able to go backtrack and, and find her. But have you ever noticed in a large crowd, if you don't stay close to who you're with, it's very easy to get separated. Same thing in your spiritual walk. If you don't stay close to God, get in His Word and in prayer, it's very easy to kind of get separated and distance made and very easy to get lost on the journey. Look at verse 5. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. You see, the second thing we have to do, not just follow God, but we need to sanctify ourselves. Sanctify means not just separate from, but separate to. In other words, uh, we need to live our lives in a way that is honoring to God and is obedient to God. When you, when you think of athletes or, or astronauts or things of that nature, uh, when, they, when they go and they train and they prepare, we just had the Olympics. Uh, do you think the Olympians, when they were preparing for the Olympics, they had specific diets? They had specific exercise regimes. Uh, they had separated themselves from normal everyday life and set themselves apart to preparing physically to compete. That is exactly what God commands us as believers. To be sanctified, to be, to be set apart, to uh, be, we get ourselves spiritually fit. Consecrate yourself, sanctify yourself, purify yourself in words and deeds and actions and follow God. The Bible tells us a number of things. Uh, only God's blood, uh, only God can cleanse by His blood. Take your Bible to uh, 1 John 1 9. We we're familiar with that verse, but sometimes it's good just to look at it. Uh, 1 John 1 9. The Bible tells us if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we need to be able to, you know, confess our sins, keep a short list, stay right with God. He, God calls us to that, and, and He calls us to, to follow Him. If you look throughout the Bible, it's generally people. Somewhere along the way, they stop following. And when you stop following, you stop living a separated life, a sanctified life. And then what happens? You don't finish victorious. Think about the life of Samson. Most of his life, he accomplished great things for God. But he didn't stay following. And he definitely did not stay sanctified or separated apart to God and keep the vows he gave. And what happened? Oh yes, he may have lived victorious, and, victorious and, and took to kill as many Philistines in his death as he did in his life. But how many of you all know that story didn't end like it could? His eyes were plucked out. He was made to be like a mule and grind grain for years and years. What about Judas Iscariot? I mean, here is a man who is called personally by Jesus Christ to follow him and train by him personally for three and a half years. Here is a guy that Jesus sent out two by two to go evangelize, right? Here is a guy that was trusted and he was the church, he, not the church, but he was the disciples' treasurer. He was the guy who handled the money bag, the finances. But somewhere along the way, he didn't follow as closely, did he? Somewhere along the way, his life wasn't uh, sanctified as it should have been. And, and the devil got in there. Now, I understand that according to he fulfilled prophecy, and I get all that. But all that still took place. And what ended up happening? His life did not end how it could have. Victoriously accomplishing great things for God. It ended in a miserable failure because he sold his very Savior for the same price as you would sell a slave. And didn't even, that money didn't even matter much to him because he ended up going out and taking his own life. 
And we challenge you. Follow God. Sanctify yourself. Now, back in Joshua chapter 3, and verse 7, the last thing this evening. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day I will bring, I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that, that, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant when ye are come to the brink of the of the water Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come thither and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua says, Hey, you want to be victorious? Draw near. Come on. You want to hear God? Draw near to God so you can hear His words. Come here. I, I, I want to tell you something. This is from the, God's Word Himself. And I challenge you this evening, come close to God. Sit at the feet of Jesus like Mary did. Remember Mary and Martha? And Martha was so busy about serving. And, and she came in. Jesus, tell her to get to work. You just tell her to get up and you know, get to work. And I said, Martha, come down. You always have people to serve. I won't always be here. She's done the right thing. She's done the one needful thing. Sometimes we need to just draw close to God. What does it mean to be nearer to God? Take your Bible to James chapter 4. Familiar passage of Scripture, James chapter 4. We'll read verse 8. James 4, verse 8, says, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Hey, you want to be close to God? Take the first step. Draw nigh to Him, and He'll draw nigh to you. Well, I don't know why I'm close. I'm not, I don't know why I don't have a close relationship with God. Well, God's here, and you're doing this. It's not God's fault. God's clear. He says, you, you know, draw near to me. You want to be victorious in your life? Follow me. Get close. Sanctify yourself. And draw close. Draw nigh to me. And when you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. You see, Jesus said to John and Andrew to come and, and, and stay with him. In John chapter 1 and verse 39, he said, come on. Um, we're, we're to come uh, to, to the Lord and, and many times where he's challenged the Bible's house to come and drink and come and rest and, and, and come, you know, we're eventually going to come for a, that wedding banquet and all these different things and, and, and draw nigh to God, have an encounter with him. God saying, listen to me. Wait upon me. Spend time with me. Hey, you want to have a successful Christian life. You want to live a victorious Christian life. Yeah. Draw nigh to God. Follow Him. Sanctify yourself. And draw near. Fear God, get near God, and hear God. You want to put it that way? Reminds me of a story I read. I don't know if you've ever been on an airplane with turbulence. There's a few times I've been on an air, air, airplane with turbulence. One time I can remember very vividly. I was in Papua New Guinea and I was flying from Port Moresby to Leh. And uh, they, they had, it was with the Bible Project. It was the one where I was told, don't worry about it. I'll get you anywhere you need to go once you get in the country. And I said, okay. And um, there's Air New Guinea and there's Air PNG, very different companies. If you ever go to Papua New Guinea, Air New Guinea and Air PNG, very different airlines. Right? Air New Guinea uh, is, is nice-ish. It's, it's probably the best maintained, the, the, the one that travels internationally, and all that sort of things. 
Air, Air PG, they don't travel internationally, and there's a reason why. Okay. And a uh, matter of fact, generally, uh, people who are not from PG don't travel Air PG. So I arrived, and when I arrived, I was told to uh, meet up, and they would hand me my plane ticket for my next destination. And so I met up with who I was supposed to meet up with, and they handed me uh, a ticket, and they said, your flight leaves in an hour. Uh, you, you know, an hour or two hours, whatever, go through the customs and, um, and you know, keep going. So I did all that and went through customs and uh, all, you know, by myself and went through all that and talked through them. And, uh, we got there and I was waiting for my flight. And uh, Air New Guinea, they call the flight information, you know, when it's leaving and all that, and they do it in Talk Pigeon and they do it in English. Air PG, they only do it in Talk Pigeon. No English. And I was sitting there trying to figure out which one was my plane and when it left. I kind of knew, uh, but sometimes they were calling planes out of order. I knew that much. I could figure that out. And this worker comes by and he looks at me and he says, uh, you look confused. I said, I am. And he said, uh, can I see your ticket? And I said, sure. It was one of the workers. I, I saw him walking around and he had a uniform on. And I handed him a ticket and he looks at the ticket and giggles. If anytime someone looks at something and laughs, you know you're in for an adventure. And he looks at me and he says, you're flying, you're a PNG. I said, I am. He goes, she'll be an adventure for you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, we don't generally have non-PNG folks fly up with us. He said, so everything's in pigeon, talk pigeon. I said, okay. He said, how about this? Before it's time for your plane to leave, I'll just come get you. And, and I'll walk you to the gate. And, and I'll, I'll point out the plane, because once you go to the gate, you still don't know which plane you're supposed to get on. There's just a bunch of planes sitting in the, in the field, and you gotta go on the right one. They tell you, but if you don't understand, you don't know. And so he got me onto the plane. And when I got onto the plane, I was the only primary English-speaking person on the plane, and uh, there was only about five of us on the entire plane. And that was including stewards, stewardesses, and you know, stuff like that. And so I sat down in my seat, and they went through their whole thing, you know, the whole safety spiel. And I was just going, I hope it's the same thing as it normally is in planes, because I don't understand the thing they just said. And she came up to me, and you know, you know, you pull that seat back thing out so you can read it. And guess what? <laughs> you couldn't read it. It was still a vision. And they said to me, it'll be okay. He came to me and spoke English to me. He said, it'll be okay, Annie. She said, my English is, is, is okay. And I said, okay. She said, do you know what to do in a plane? I said, sit down, buckle up, pray. He said, sounds good. And off we went. We began to descend in the lane. And right as we began to descend, you ever hear the wheels go as it goes down? Well, you know what you hear? And then all of a sudden, pull up real quick from landing. What was that? Then they make an announcement, and again, don't understand it. She comes to me and says, we should be okay. We're giving another go. The landing gear should come down this time. I looked at her and I said, might have been better if you just didn't come down. <laughs> she said, yeah, remember that pray thing? Be a good time. I said, okay. She said, what did you do? I prayed. Next thing you know, we come back in. <laughs> They go out. Yes, yes. Right as we're about to land, the wind comes and the plane literally does this. And the next thing you know, like this, and then like this, and then boom, boom. Have you ever bounced in a plane? Oh, I have. You hit the ground and bounce up, hit the ground, bounce up, hit the ground, bounce up, and you're thinking, please don't, don't, don't. Hit the ground and it sticks and just kind of glides. You know what? Sometimes 
Turbulence comes, and it can be scary. And the life is the same way, isn't it? But I'll tell you this, I have a whole lot more confidence in the pilot of life than I did in the pilot of that airplane. I do know as we walked off, the pilot sticks his head out and he looked at me and he smiled real big and waved and gave me the thumbs up. So I smiled and waved and gave him the thumbs up. And he just, he was as happy as could be, you know. But I'll tell you this, in life, that you can have more confidence in God who is your pilot uh, than that pilot in that plane, I'll tell you for sure. Hey, you got me safely there. I'm still alive. I'll tell the story. But you know what? We don't have to worry when we're in Christ. We're going to challenge you this evening. If you want to have victory, if you want to live a victorious Christian life, hey, follow Sanctify yourself. Oh, be obedient. And draw close to God. Hey, you have as close a relationship with God as you want. He promised you, you draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh to you. Say, so, well, I don't have a close relationship with God. It's not God's fault, it's yours. Will you draw nigh to Him? Because if you will, He'll draw nigh to you. And when you're close to God, you know what? It doesn't matter what life goes through. It doesn't matter whether you know the course. It doesn't matter if you've never been this way before. God knows exactly how to guide you through life. And you know what? You'll get to the other side victorious. These children of Israel, they got across Jordan. No, didn't lose a single person. Walked across on dry ground. And they got to the other side. They got the camp all set up. And they began the campaign. The only time that they had trouble in the campaign is when they didn't do these three things. Didn't take them long. They got to Jericho and someone, someone didn't draw an eye. Someone didn't follow. Someone did not sanctify. And someone did not draw an eye. And what happened? It caused a lot of problems in their life when they went to Ai. But every time they followed this simple thing, they were victorious. And I can say with 100% certainty as, I, as you can in this, this, this story this evening. If you'll do these things and you will follow God and you will sanctify yourself and you will draw an eye to Him. You will live a victorious Christian life. It doesn't matter if you go through something you've never been through before. God will get you through. And you'll be able to look back and say, you know what? It's amazing what God Father, we come before you this evening. And Lord, we thank you so much for all that you're doing and, and the way that you're at work amongst us. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us to live our lives as these Israelites did. And Lord, may we learn from their examples and not from uh, when they did not obey. And Lord, may we learn the result of that. And Lord, may we, you help us to be obedient to you. Help us to follow you and to live our lives separated to serve your purpose and also to draw as close to you as we can Lord may we see you do great things continue to see you do great things in our lives individually in our church family and we give you the praise and glory for all that you're doing in Christ's name we pray Amen oh, wise, thank you once again for coming out this evening Again, these presents are there. If you haven't got your Father's Day present, please do come, come grab one. Uh, there are plenty of them. Do remember to grab the lid of the cup that's, that's, up, that's sitting on. Uh, in, a few in a few moments, uh, we'll pack all this up. Um, all the chairs go back on their own stands. They go back in that back cupboard over there. Um, and then if you could help, uh, there's a number of these of our church stuff that goes back in the church trailer. There's a bunch of it that goes back into our van. And whether it goes in the trailer or the van, if you could really you know, be a help to, to get all that stuff loaded in there as it's all the church stuff, um, that would be a great thing. And then uh, this week, I'm going to try to take the church trailer completely apart and uh, repack it in a way to try to get in all that we need. Because in the new building, we have different needs you know, for the children's ministries and all that type of thing. And then on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, is our prayer meeting and Bible study. Uh, we'll be continuing on. 
in our study of being in Christ. And uh, it will be Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, this Wednesday night. Now, the Wednesday night following the 15th of September, um, we will have a special guest speaker on that Wednesday night. If you don't normally come on, that, on Wednesday nights, uh, let me challenge you, invite you to come out on Wednesday night, the 15th of, of September. Uh, my new home pastor will be bringing the message that evening. Uh, he'll be joining us by a Zoom link and uh, doing that. He's, he's glad to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and to be with you guys and uh, spend some time with us as a church and, and give us a challenge from the Word of God. And, uh, and then the following Wednesday night is the 22nd. Uh, that Wednesday night, the men should be, Lord willing, without lockdowns, uh, we should be at men's camp. Yes. And uh, so what we'll do is what we did last year at men's camp. Um, I'll record a Bible study and, and that for those who aren't at men's camp. And we'll set that to go out on our YouTube channel that Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, you'll be able to tune into that and, and have that, that, that Bible lesson. And then spend some time with her as families. Um, if you aren't at the men's camp, men's camp will have a special service at men's camp as well. Then the following Wednesday night after that, so that's the 22nd, the 29th of September, uh, that week is the National Baptist Fellowship in Toowoomba, uh, barring any sort of um, lockdown or anything like that. And uh, what we'll do that Wednesday night, the last Wednesday night of September, um, I will share with you, but if you're able to come down and up, come over to Toowoomba with us and be a part of the meetings, you're welcome to do so. It'll be a great time together. You do need to register for that so that they can have space for you. Um, but if you aren't able to come there, they're going to be live streaming those services. And so I'll send out that Wednesday night um, meetings live stream. And I encourage you to join with us on that live stream. Uh, you might know the speaker that Wednesday night at NBF. You might recognize him. Um, you're looking at him, all right? And so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you'll be able to tune in and be a part of that as well. Um, so that's coming up in the next couple of Wednesday nights. A little bit different as we go, uh, but we look forward to that. Now, also on the back table, on, not the back table anymore, on the welcome table, um, there is a box that has lots of hundred um, band together tracks. If you want to take those and use those to invite people to the church or letterbox, you're welcome to do so. And I do be in prayer on the 14th and 15th of September. Um, right before we go away to men's camp, um, there will be almost 31,000 homes in the area getting a gospel invitation to our church um, and a new mailing that's, that's going to be going out into the area. So do be prayer for those things that are coming up. Look forward to seeing you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock.